So what you're looking at right now is the, uh, the 20th anniversary of Oh My Goddess. Right now there are people still uh, coming in. They're giving us these uh, raffle tickets there on the way on the door. So. So yeah, we should be uh, up and ready for a few minutes here. Oh wow, that's it, huh? I was kind of hoping there would be a packed house, but but then again, this is just a oh, smaller room actually, not a whole lot. I think we should be ready. So enjoy the panel. Ladies and gentlemen, sitting in the center, you're okay now. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't have, if you want to move to this room, maybe? That's okay, because I don't have a battery in Oh, okay. Then I'm going to have to get you a seat. All right? All right, thank you. <laughs> we have designed this omnibus series um, in cooperation with Coast State Division. Awesome. Um, now it's a 48 uh, volumes in English, which is what the whole series will be. So you can imagine the omnibus will be in the right. The Dark Horse versions of Oh My God, it says to say that the Bob versions are based directly on the Kadansha versions. And some of you may notice that the Kadansha versions um, differ a great amount in page size, in page count, I should say. The volumes are around 16, 17, and 80. Those are about 240 pages per volume. However, some of the volumes in the early 30s are about 140 pages, so 100 pages different. So we realized that we simply put um, three, say, three of the regular books in each omnibus, then we end up having omnibuses which are 400 pages long and omnibuses which are 700 pages long. So uh, we decided to go back to something that we used to do, and again, this is sort of Mr. Fukushima's permission, we're going to divide them up by chapter. So here's the, uh, first of all, I have a lot of guts uh, showing Mr. Fujishima my drawing here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is what it will look like. We want to uh, have, so 
who these uh, omnibuses who have the fixed spines who are going to use that at heart and have big fortresses and nonsense. What sign would be somewhat reminiscent of afternoon, which is the magazine that all the guys runs in? So you have artwork on the spine. So obviously the book one will start off with Bell Dan Eagle, which we will have her the three will have stole. We'll get all the goddesses. I want to put your girl in there and cover. One of my favorites. Of course, yeah. Hero. Hmm. Uh, here's how it will break down, by the way. So you will observe the first uh, four omnibus books actually contain uh, three complete volumes. It's after that we're going to start uh, breaking up by chapter. You notice that by doing it this way, um, we have a fairly uh, consistent number of pages for the entire series. And uh, we try to use June quick breaks. I mean, come to think that the original Kodasha volumes often end straight in the middle of the story arc. So ours will probably actually be a little bit more but uh, anyway, we're doing that, and one of the reasons we're doing this is because um, last month we switched our book distribution, which is always from Diamond, who distributes our comics, to Penguin Random House. Penguin Random House is the largest book publisher in the world, and we figured that we would be able to reach uh, probably 40% of our bookstores by doing today. Well, this means that this is also a great opportunity to give reintroduce series like Oh My Goddess to the whole audience. So we first did it. We did this reintroduction back in 2005 when we started going on the block. And now, uh, 10 years later, next year, which is when the audience will start, this will be our chance to relaunch the series again. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about some of that past. I thought I would try to pile everything we'd ever done for my goddess on the table, take a picture of it, but I couldn't even get it all in the shot. <laughs> um, we are looking at over, there are over 100 individual comic books for my goddess. There were 19 of the uh, flop volumes, uh, trap novels. There have been 46 so far of the, um, the unflop. There's the Oh My Goddess novel there. Yep. Um, oh My Goddess uh, began running in August of 1994. And for the first 10 years of its life in English, that is to say the first half of it, it ran as a comic book. Uh, Lee and I were talking about how manga really began in the US <coughs> in the 80s as a subset of American comic books. And promoting a manga in comic book format was different from what we had spent the day straight in the graphic novel. Here's where it began, this is the very first issue of Oh My Goddess uh, in August 1994. If you see there, um, in the bottom right, it says, as seen in the Anadego video release. Um, there have been a number of Oh My Goddess Anadego for years. Animago released the very first uh, Oh My Goddess Anime, which was the five um, episode of the series. And um, it was coming out at the same time. For that reason, the first two issues did not, um, the first six issues of Oh My Goddess were not based directly on the first six chapters of the story of Japan. Instead, Warren Smith of Studio Proteus, who brought the series over in English, he tried to have the stories mirror the, the anime as closely as possible. So you sort of skip over and you get to some of the goddesses, because you don't get to meet her until volume two of the original series. Right. And Paul thought you better you got to meet her right away. And her is not going to wait. And matter of fact, this is on the inside of the comic, you can see an ad there for the Oh My Goddess video from the day goes. And um, <coughs> this is of course published by Dark Horse Comics. And uh, I can't afford it. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, yeah, uh, yes, you know, there have been a number of movies based on our comics, like Sin City and 300. But The Mask was our first of big hit. Uh, it, made, uh, it was a very big success for, for Dark Horse. People know about Star Wars changing Dark Horse with The Mask. And also changing Dark Horse quite a bit, too. So here you can see uh, some of the other uh, issues that are coming out at the time. Classic Star Wars, uh, Tom Cruise, Valley of um, Star Wars, Tales of the Jedi. So basically, and then you have all my goddess there, right, the checklist down here in the lower right. So again, uh, this was a time when all my goddess, the post manga, was a conflict. And this is the last page of the first issue, which is also the last page of the first chapter of Japan. And you see the first of the letters to the Enchantress um, uh, letter column, which we are still doing at this day. If you're wondering how we managed to get letters even before we uh, put out the first issue, it's of course they sent out what's called an Ashcan, which is a preview edition that's just uh, simply printed and got people's solicitations. 
Now, it may seem strange to publish a manga one chapter a month as a comic book, but really that's the way it more or less is published in Japan. They don't release it one graphic novel at a time in Japan, they release it one chapter a month in Afternoon Magazine. And of course, if you look at Afternoon, you'll notice that its, its page size is actually very similar to that of the American comic book. So, manga were never meant to be read only in the, the talking bot size. They're meant to be read first in the magazine size and then collected later. The rest of uh, Letters to the Enchantress, here you see Nat for early Evan Dorman comment. Yeah. You know, which I think was the first thing he did for a dark horse. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, that is. Uh, one of our early Star Wars comics, and next to that, a great uh, comic by the creator of Becca, uh, Yasumi Kuroi of Shikazu. It's actually called Star of the Curse, which I think uh, it's a rebel sword. It's a great comic about a uh, a Japanese kid who falls in with uh, Kurdish food fighters in Turkey. Unfortunately, he didn't catch on with the leadership. Dark Horse has actually done a number of manga that never got collected as graphic novels because it didn't, they didn't succeed as comics. So the idea was that no one's going to read it as a comic, no one's going to read it as a graphic novel. Um, so, one of the issues about doing uh, all these monthly covers is you run out of cover art quick. Koshiki Fujishima only does so many fully painted at covers, most of those go to the draft novels. So if you look closely, you'll notice that this is actually not Koshiki Fujishima, this is uh, Itadori Masabara, who is the director of the anime. Okay. And uh, you'll notice actually the anime will be in the sky. So in order to get all the covers we needed, we sometimes had to, uh, to borrow them from the source for permission. <laughs> By the way, there's just some of the ads that are on the back, if you remember the things were Remember saying it used to be really big for Kenshin Yo? And so this was Secret Speed, 
other story arcs were the Devil in this Earth, uh, Phantom Racer. And those of you who remember the flop uh, graphic novels, that those graphic novels also had those as subtitles. Uh, Traveler, so that was sweet. Uh, Wing and Prayer. Learning to Love. Now here's another issue with covers. Uh, sometimes if you didn't have painted covers or anime art, you might have to colorize black and white image. Yeah, and you'll, you'll know that's a colorized image there. Okay, you right. Okay. No, it does look like a Keiichi cross-dressing, but it's... Uh, <laughs> there was a though. You know, Skull built uh, singles. Uh, oh, okay. Single <laughs> was originally that green model. Uh, it was the green. Right, all the people love her. Love those short I believe um, it's cut off there, but this I believe that was issue 112. And this is the last of the, um, of the comic books in 2004. From here on out, it was published uh, straight as a graphic novel. However, um, also. Were you on the screen We also published Oh My Gods in another format. Um, so this is about a thousand pages. We tried our own magazine, it was some smaller, 128 pages. It's kind of hard to make a success of a um, modern magazine in the US. But for a while we did publish an anthology magazine for about five years, that's the longer last. And Oh My Goddess ran it. And I believe that some of the chapters we ran in there were ones which we skipped over. Yeah, you were in this early 2000s. Yeah, so you were in early 2000s. Oh, that was a little down in the back. I remember that. Which, by the way, is coming out in Japan in the summer. It actually just came out just like your space. You never see this one. This is the very first Oh My Goddess uh, graph novel collection. It came out in 1996. It was a flop, of course. It was all about the word flop back then. Uh, and actually, uh, it means of those um, skipped over stories from the original issues. Now, uh, here's a comparison. What you see there at the top is that is the um, inside of the first publication, which is flop. What you see there at the bottom is that same story as you see it in the current Dark Horse edition over there on the left, where it's unflopped. And notice also that um, that page is now in its original color, whereas um, in the original comic book, it was reproduced in grayscale. In our current draft novels, we've gone back and written in color and it was originally in grayscale. Sora Unchained was the last of the flop uh, draft novels to come out. Um, it actually has an odd number. It's called uh, 19 slash 20. The others are one, two, three, all the way up to 18. The reason it has two numbers on it is after that, we were in the story going straight to Japan 21. And um, we thought that if we didn't, uh, even though it was the 19th in the Bob Graphic Novel series, we thought if we didn't 20 in there, people would not be in the summer. So. The, the racing story? Yeah, the racing story did really hard to rewrite because the uh, characters had text and uh, numbers on their vehicles, and one of the things that Torin you know, wanted in the script was to note everywhere that something had to be flopped and redrawn so that the letter didn't miss anything. So I had to going over it and making sure I had caught all of the text and all of the numbers in the uh, uh, sort of, sort of, uh, I think Sora was the one who had lettering on her jumpsuit. Frankly, that was a real pain about, you know, how do you get the flop on these new for years? Yeah. It's very difficult. It was really nice Although, you yes. know, when stuff was flopped, it gives up a lot of us in the It's the summer camp. Well, I don't, um, you know, I really have to, I really have to thank the fans of the original I got to the beginning, because in the middle of it, you had to switch from green and one way to green and And that's not easy. It's like, uh, you're the people who kept it going for the first 10 years, and we wouldn't have gotten 20 years if it hadn't been uh, a comic book. So I appreciate the people who are willing to make that switch. 
I too, I began editing manga in 1997. Uh, my first manga worked on was And I too come from the era of white flop manga, so it was confusing for me too. I thought I needed a big manga switch in my head. Yeah. If I recall, the original plot manga was also on hardback, right? Hardback? Like hardcover. I don't know, I found a copy of it in hardcover. There might have been, perhaps for some sort of special edition. Library binding, maybe? Maybe. That's, that's true, I do library. Who might have got it? Of course. Who's been reading since it first started to move before? Well, I like a few people in the audience. So you must be at least 20 years old. Yes. <laughs> so, and who started reading it when it started in Arkansas? And who's been reading it less than five years? Well, for all of you diehards. I was rewriting it when my son was eight years old and he just graduated. Yes. 
uh, this series is called Discommunication. And uh, actually, the mysterious girlfriend X runs right next to the oh my God, the same uh, volume. But uh, so here's a scene from the English version of Oh My Goddess there on the bottom, the Dark Horse edition. And up there at the top is that story is appeared in afternoon. So that's that's how the Japanese fans see it. I want to talk a little bit about a very important person uh, in Oh My Goddess, and that's the person who's led it from the beginning, uh, Susie Lee. Susie Lee has Studio Cutie, does so many of the books I uh, can't. Um, I guess we cashed. Um, these are some of the instructions I have to give for Susie. Uh, this is in volume 8, where they're having the uh, Looney and uh, Skull in the death match for the robots. Oh, that was uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, the campus splits into two radical factions, each back in one's row. Uh, it's a satire of like. Uh, it is, but uh, she, you know, she had to retouch all of these days. So these were done with an actual brush, and she later scanned them in for reference. That's right. I think she actually puts the tracing paper on the tablet and presses through. <laughs> All right, what were you saying? Uh, I was just saying something to the effect of we should have the rotary phone call on God. Oh, yeah. Go, go, go. 
we say we love her for translating the series? Yeah. I think it's hopefully just a moment she'll be able to hear it. I hear you, Carl. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Hi, Dana. It's Leah. Hi, Leah. <laughs> oh, wow. Hello, How many of you? This is introducing Dana Lewis, who is the longtime translator of Oh My Goddess. Okay, everybody, count to three. Right. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. some raffle tickets right now. So here we go. Last three, yeah. Last three. 
Yes. Thank you. Congratulations. Next one goes to zero nine zero. Zero nine zero. Oh, nine no. All right. The next fan to one hundred. One hundred. Anyone hundred? Okay, we'll try. Nope. I'm breaking it in. Zero five four. <laughs> now, we all know about variant covers when it comes to American comics, but how many know there are variant covers in manga, too? In Japan, there's, you get this variant slip cover for volume 27. Oh, nice. You can put on your book. We are going to uh, get this out too. One six two. One six two. So right now we're fairly doing raffles. Things should be wrapping up soon. Seven, there he is. On my left. Five two. Zero five two. Last call. Oh, uh, okay. There he is. Down on the right. This is the last one. Who's the lucky one? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, here we go. 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 I love you. Call my number. One six eight. Please don't be here. <laughs> that was great.
That's the Oh My Goddess 20th anniversary panel. You enjoy it. See ya.